please join me in welcoming our mayor, J. Michael Houston. Steve, thank you very, very much. And thank you to the Commercial Real Estate Network for, for again sponsoring this, this luncheon. I want to tell you, this, this is a great site from up here because this room is really full. If they could get about three more people in here, I think they'd really be doing something. I, I'm afraid that we've got the fire marshal here also, and he might start going around and doing a little bit of, of counting, which would, would not be a, be a good, good thing. Again, good afternoon, and I will only guarantee you one thing this afternoon. The message that you will receive today at the Prairie Capital Convention Center is going to be a far better message than the message that people are receiving at the state capitol <laughs> right now. <laughs> Sister Catherine, thank you for that, that prayer because I think you really covered all the bases. I always appreciate when people ask to, for others to pray for me because that really is, is important in terms of, of what I do and really helps me in terms of, of keeping going. You know, this is the, the third time that I've had the, the opportunity to, to come here for the state of the city. As I told you in each of the past two times that, that I've been here, I'm still having the time of my life. Believe it or not, I'm having fun on a daily basis. And even though the, the job has certainly had its challenges, the joy and honor to serve the people of Springfield is really something that I cherish. You know, when I ran for office in 2011, I ran because I loved this city. And someone needed to step forward and to deal with the problems that existed in city government. Now, traveling the journey with me is the love of my life, my wife, Carolyn. For 47 years, she has been my support, and I thank you for standing with me and really making me what I am today. I am pleased for the third year in a row to stand before you with positive news on the financial condition of the city. As you will recall, if you were here either last year or the year before, one of the ways, one of the things I started off with saying was that as a banker, I looked at the city as being bankrupt when I took over in May of 2011. Not from a legal point of view, but from a person who had spent 24 years in banking. For the fiscal year ending February 28, 2011, the average daily balance was a negative $3.5 million a day in the corporate fund. And the corporate fund is the general fund that pays for the basic services of city government. Rebuilding the city's finances was and continues to be my top priority. We had to make some difficult choices that were necessary for the city's long-term stability. In doing so, we created a roadmap for recovery in a short 10-month period that remained through 2012, and we actually turned the corner in terms of the city's finances during that 10-month period. I can report today that the daily average balance in the corporate fund for fiscal year 2014, which ended this past February 28th, was $7.8 million a day. That is up from $2.8 million a day the previous year, and that's really up from a negative $3.5 million for the fiscal year before I took office. That is an $11.3 million turnaround in three years. Now also, during this past fiscal year, our corporate fund balance is preliminarily projected to end up at greater than $20 million, which is the first time 
that the city has ever had that much money in its corporate balance and the highest the city has ever experienced. Now, if there's anyone here who thinks that this just happened or suddenly we had an influx of money, I want to tell you something. You're wrong. It happened for one reason. We have a management team that manages city government and we manage the budget. Our financial resilience has not gone unnoticed. Our economic improvement was recently recognized by both Moody's Investor Service and Standard & Poor's. In today's economic climate, it is a major step for any governmental entity to receive an upgrade from a rating agency. But more to the point, our own local investors have shown faith in our resiliency. <coughs> During the first phase of our infrastructure program, Sangamon County investors ordered $4.3 million worth of our bonds. Overall, the demand outweighed the supply with $73 million of orders for $27 million of bonds. I believe that this is a strong indicator that faith in the city finances has been restored. My long involvement with the chamber in the community gave me a unique insight into our city's infrastructure. It was an issue that had been neglected for 20 years. The problem was determining a mechanism to finance and pay for those needed repairs. As mayor, I knew it would require my leadership to find a solution. Last year at this luncheon, I addressed the need to pass the ordinances that I had proposed to deal with our infrastructure problems. I am happy to report that with the support of the Chamber of Commerce, local labor leaders, a number of neighborhood associations, and a majority of the members of the City Council, we were able to find a solution that provides the needed funding to begin addressing our maintenance and repair needs. In fact, without the strong support of the Chamber of Commerce, the infrastructure program would not have happened. After a very harsh winter with water main breaks, standing water, sewer backups, and potholes, I am pleased to announce that over the next three years, we will tackle our crumbling infrastructure. We will begin with approximately $22 million of overlay work to our streets during this fiscal year. But before I go more in depth about the program, there are three people here from the Public Works Department that I would like to recognize. Mike Dirksen is the Operations Coordinator for the Streets Division. Dave Haversberg is a Master Operating Engineer and Joe Catalino is a Public Works Foreman. They have been at the forefront of the crews that work so hard to keep our streets clear during this unusual winter and are here today representing all the workers of the Public Works Department. These are just three of the Public Works employees who worked tirelessly this past winter to clear our roads and keep our drivers as safe as possible. Most of the work that was done was done overnight in bitter cold hours under terrible conditions. Typically, it is overnight when we call the or when the call crews get the call to come in. These three workers, along with their colleagues, worked long, hard, cold hours for the people of Springfield. Please join me in warmly extending our appreciation to our Public Works Department. And gentlemen, would you please stand? I also want to take the opportunity to recognize Mark Mahoney, who has done an outstanding job as the Director of Public Works. And he has done it with 27 less people than when I took office. Mark, please stand up. Now we have a number of people from city government that are right over here. 
We've got police officers, we've got firefighters, we've got people from CWLP. And when you think about the winter that we have experienced, these are people who are serving this community 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And they serve it no matter what the weather is, what the conditions are, or what the problems are. And I would ask all of the people from city government to please stand up and be recognized. You know, as we look forward, we anticipate a very busy 2014 construction season. We are embarking on an unprecedented $86.6 million investment over the next three years that will bring much needed repairs to our streets and sidewalks. In addition, we'll be, we will be investing approximately $100 million in sewers alone over the next 30 years. <clears throat> Engineering and planning are already underway with storm sewers and street repairs simply waiting for the weather to turn. Every street in the city has been rated on a five-point scale. Residents need to know that the streets that are rated the worst will be overlaid first. Over the course of the program, more than half of Springfield's 625 miles of roads will be redone. We will be doing $9 million worth of sidewalk repairs with $3 million being spent this year alone. We will be investing millions more in oil and chip road repair, concrete patching, brick street repair, drainage improvements, traffic signal modernization, and a number of preventive pro maintenance programs. Those programs are critical to maintaining the infrastructure we have, but there is more to do and more is planned if we are serious about repairing our community's infrastructure. You know, as we think about the future of Springfield, there is no project or issue more important to our city than moving the railroad tracks from 3rd to 10th Streets. I am sure that many of you are like me, and you are already experiencing delays due to the increased number of freight trains that are passing through our city. With the help of Senator Durbin and other members of our congressional and state legislative delegations and Governor Quinn, the move of the 3rd Street tracks to 10th Street is well underway with the Carpenter Street underpass set to begin construction this summer. In the meantime, however, enhancements to 3rd Street will allow the 10th Street consolidation to move forward while improving safety on the 3rd Street tracks. Quad gates and fencing will be added to allow the trains to increase speed from 25 to 40 miles per hour through the city. These type safety features will create a much needed quiet zone along the 3rd Street tracks, which will only enhance residential prospects along the entire rail corridor, particularly our downtown. This year, we will finish up on a number of other capital projects. We are close to completion on the much needed bridge repairs on Chatham Road with work on Fayette Avenue likely later this year. Other deteriorating bridges are scheduled for repair. With the help of state funds and tax increment funding, we are continuing with our downtown streetscape improvements that have proven so popular and have improved our downtown appearance. The Stanford Extension, which will create an east-west corridor for our city, is progressing into land acquisition in the final design engineering phase with construction possible late this year or next. Last Wednesday, Governor Quinn announced a much needed overlay on a segment of Wabash east of Cokie Mill Road and the expansion of a segment of Cokie Mill from Cokie Mill to I-72 at a cost of over $20 million. Dirksen Parkway's expansion to five lanes 
on a segment has just begun between Clear Lake and Ridge at a cost of approximately $10 million. With the growth in that part of the city, this is a significant and much needed improvement along that corridor. All this work means jobs and more jobs. Local engineering, local contractors, and local labor are hard at work and many more will soon begin as the weather turns. We are now making the investments in our infrastructure that are necessary to sustain our community while positioning it for strong growth in the future. I believe we are in a position to have much progress in Springfield. We continue to be a thriving center of commerce and we've already seen much progress in the last year. For anyone who has been down South MacArthur recently, you have seen what has been done in transforming an old big box location into an 89,000 square foot grocery store in less than a year. It is our expectation that the beautiful new $10 million high V grocery store will open prior to Memorial Day. It will be a full service grocery store featuring an in-service, in-store restaurant along with a drive through coffee shop and a pharmacy. High V has hired 125 full-time employees and last week hired 500 part-time employees. The city of Springfield created a tax increment district along a small portion of South MacArthur to revitalize this area and will be contributing three and a half million dollars from the MacArthur Boulevard TIF. The overall benefit of this community investment is to provide quality grocery service to underserved nearby neighborhoods, revitalize the entire site, and stimulate investment up and down MacArthur Boulevard. In addition, it will create jobs and property tax revenues for the 10 taxing bodies on the property tax bill after the TIF has expired. And while talking about MacArthur Boulevard, the outlets at Springfield will be breaking ground on their 80 store development south of Shields this spring. Downtown Springfield is looking just as exciting, if not more. We are close to finalizing the purchase of the entire square block immediately north of the governor's mansion between Jackson and Capitol and 4th and 5th streets. Talk about a prime piece of real estate. Talk to our commercial real estate people about that particular block. We will be soliciting proposals for the redevelopment of that block which will have a dramatic impact on our downtown. Barker Development Corporation has completed the exterior and most of the interior rehabilitation of the Motor Inn at 4th and Monroe in the central area using $860,000 of TIF funds. Bright Day New Development continues to work on the Ferguson Building at 6th and Monroe and the Booth Building just a little south on Monroe. The city has committed $1.65 million in TIF funds to these projects and they have already had an extensive cleanup and the removal of exterior window grades. You know, as you look at those three projects, it is amazing how each of those three projects have already done in, for the appearance of their respective areas. The City of Springfield is pleased to partner with the Kidseum to assist in the rehabilitation and building improvements with $888,000 of TIF funds for the old Snepp and Barnes building on the 400 block of East Adams. We continue to benefit from the dramatic investment from our healthcare industries. St. John's Hospital, Memorial Medical Center, the Springfield Clinic, and Southern Illinois University School of Medicine together have invested over $350 million in their respective physical plants. These projects have kept people in the construction and related trades and professions working during some very difficult economic times. This is in addition to what they contribute to our economic vitality by means of employment 
and the valuable contributions they make to the region's well-being and quality of life. Another critical component to our local economy is our visitors industry. The $5 million overhaul and the opening of the newly renovated President Abraham Lincoln Springfield, a double tree by Hilton Hotel, represents a significant entry into the national market of travelers, tourists, and conventioneers. It will serve to strengthen the city's position in attracting conventions to the recent $15 million renovation of the neighboring Prairie Capital Convention Center. This renovation allows our Convention and Visitors Bureau to attract new business, retain existing customers, and gives us new sales and marketing opportunities to groups and associations. The city is proud to partner with the Springfield Metropolitan Exposition and Auditorium Authority by means of $5 million of assistance in TIF funding. What they have done here at the Prairie Capital Convention Center is simply amazing. And I talked to Tim Smith while we were having lunch, and the chairs we are sitting on are going to be replaced. <laughs> They've been in service since 1979, and believe me, the Convention Center has got their money's worth out of it. The History Comes Alive program will begin its fifth season in downtown Springfield at the beginning of June and will be filled with period reenactments and musical entertainment to coincide with the tourism high season. With all the great programs, our strong finances, improving infrastructure, and improving quality of life, Springfield continues to rank high as one of the most affordable metropolitan areas in the country due to our low cost of living. We need to build on those assets and strengths. Having said all that, now is not the time to change direction or to rest on our laurels. Economic uncertainty and a multitude of other challenges remain. We must stay the course and continue to operate a smaller, more efficient, and more cost-effective government as we deliver quality services to the people of Springfield. Thank you for your attention, for your love of our city, and for your partnership in working with us to ensure our continued growth and development. We are a stronger community because we all stand together. May God bless you, and may God bless the great American city of Springfield. Thank you very much. few that are as important as the downtown area. There is something about Abraham Lincoln that literally attracts people from all over the world. All employees are valued for their talents and empowered to reach their fullest potential.